my name is Sam Pecorero, and I'm an ecologist with USGS. I'm going to be talking to you guys uh, today about some high resolution mapping of spawning reefs in northern Lake Michigan. We've been undertaking with our partners at MDNR and the Nature Conservancy. And so, first off, um, why is it important to map these reefs? Well, they help support the $7 billion annual Great Lakes fishery. They're critical to tribes and coastal economies throughout the Great Lakes. <clears throat> Numerous lithophilic species, um, inclu including Lake Trout, as we've heard about, Cisco, Walleye, Lake Whitefish, and Lake Sturgeon, uh, depend on these, these reefs uh, to spawn, basically. And so reefs are uh, being degraded in many locations. And so it's important to conserve those reefs that are left and to restore those of, that have been lost. And so MDNR uh, is currently in the process of assessing the quality of reefs in Northern Lake Michigan. <clears throat> and our role is to uh, help assess the extent and provide reconnaissance for uh, sort of to help guide that restoration. So our objectives in this work are to provide rapid uh, bathy and backscatter maps at between 12 and 18 reefs over the two year study period. And those areas are being def defined by our partners at the Nature Conservancy and MDNR. And <clears throat> some of the derived products from those, from that, from that bathy and bathymetry, or bathy and uh, backscatter include geomorphological classes, roughness, and then uh, a substrate classification model. And then of course, we're also providing technical input and um, in technical input to the reef assessment work itself. And so what sort of reef, reef characterization parameters are we interested in, uh, in providing for, from this mapping work? So uh, first and foremost, the extent, uh, as, as we heard um, this week, you know, it's not, some of these structures are not well-defined. And so just providing info on, delineating them is, is important. And then of course, uh, habitat characteristics such as um, their slope, aspect and roughness, and then including some roughness derivatives such as uh, the terrain rugged, ruggedness index and the topographic position indices. And then of course, uh, geomorphic classification and uh, a CMEX based substrate classification. Sorry guys, I'm having trouble advancing here. Um, so just to give you an idea of where, where we, uh, our candidate reefs are, actually where we've mapped already this year, I should say. Here are the 2021 target reefs in, in Northeastern Lake Michigan. So you can see um, Grand Traverse Bay there in the lower left and um, Little Traverse Bay up in the upper right. And so there's four, uh, there's four reefs in Grand Traverse, two in Little Traverse, and then one on the spit here, but sort of between them. And the, um, the colors there are the, uh, the landform classifications that I'll uh, dig into in, in just a minute. And so how are we, how are we actually um, collecting this data? So we've, get, we've got a, uh, a multi-beam sonar system. It's a, a Norbert IWVMSH. Uh, Nominally 400 kilohertz system. It's got range agility though, <clears throat> and we're we're it's got a differential GPS using uh, a Planix real-time kinematic uh, positional correction, which is accurate to better than five centimeters of horizontal error. Then, in addition to the real-time kinematic, we're also using Pause Pack to post-process the data with uh, SmartBase to get it as uh, accurate positionally as possible. And then for the for the um, for the processing of the outputs, we're using the QPS suite. So we're using Chimera for um, the bathy and then FMGT for the backscatter. And we're gridding both, product, both of those products at, at, at 25 centimeters. <clears throat> and so in order to provide ground truth information for uh, a substrate classification model, we're using our uh, L3, I, Iver 3 autonomous underwater vehicle which is outfitted with nine megapixel color and stereo match grayscale uh, cameras. 
And uh, the, the nice thing about that system is everything is georeferenced because it's got an inertial navigation system. And so it, it, it tracks within uh, less than a tenth of a percent or down to as, as, as well as uh, three hundredths of a percent, I should say, uh, along the distance traveled. So to put that in real terms, say if you were to put it down for like a five kilometer transect, you could expect it to pop up within like two to three meters uh, of your expectation, which is which is really pretty accurate and pretty remarkable. <clears throat> and so, just to look at some of the look at some of the outputs from our our multi beam uh, data collection. So here, uh, the seven reefs we've um, we've sampled this this summer. And we've we've already gone through uh, sort of a first round of QA QC, but it's still a work in progress. But um, you know, because we're interested in in, in spawning habitat for fish, um, <clears throat> you know, we're interested in in places that have sort of the most kind of reef structure. So even just looking at this first pass of the of the Bathy, you can see places like uh, Fisherman's Island here tend to have a more abruptly um, changing. Uh, bathymetric structure, similarly in Elk Rapids, as opposed to something like uh, Bay Harbor, which has got sort of just a really slowly uh, sloping uh, topography. So even even information as 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 um, basic as that is 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 useful for for site selection. Um, and you know we've done the first round of QAQC on this, but I'll, I'll, as you can see later, there's still maybe some more to be done. And so the methods for uh, one of our derived products here that, or some of our derived products here, the geomorphic classes, we used um, BRESS, which I think you've heard a lot about this, this week. It's a bathymetric and reflectivity-based estimator for seafloor segments. And uh, Jamie Hoover, I know, talked a lot about this earlier this week, and, and big shout out to her. She provided a lot of guidance on, on best practices on how to run this. Um, so we, we ran this with a four-class solution, and that, that's using the bathymetry only. We were running it, and it uses local ternary patterns, which basically is taking uh, an individual cell and looking at the local local patterns, either, you know, it's like a nearest neighbor approach, basically. And you can, you can it has some input settings, like a search radius, for instance, do you want to look close? Like how how close is your inner radius? How, how far is your outer radius? And we set those things pretty, pretty fine scale because <clears throat> the pattern, the, the process we're interested in here is, is, is fish. Um, spawning site selection, and so we think that that fish are, are using like very much the local scale rather than a, a big growth scale um, information to to make those selections. So that's what we did for the um, geomorphic classification. Then we also um, have run a, a substrate classification model. We took the AUV data, and we we classified. Um, we took as a first pass, we did 500 ground truth images. We labeled them to the CMEX classes. Um, <clears throat> for the course groups, we 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 used the uncon unconsolidated classes to subgroup, and then in the fine the fine groups, we uncon we uncon used the unconsolidated groups all binned into fine, and then we ran that through a supervised classification model using a random forest. And so here's an output from the breast landforms. <clears throat> you can see, um, again, you see sort of this, well, first I should, I should give you the, uh, the key here. So, so flats are gray, slopes are green, <clears throat> ridges are pink, and valleys are blue. And so like Bay Harbor, which I was talking about earlier, got this big large flat area which we see is gray and then like a gentle slope <clears throat> moving in uh, moving up up slope here but then places like uh, Elk Rapids you see like some flats in here but then you see like much more abrupt changes in topography into slopes and then you got little ridges and valleys in here so <clears throat> you like I think that using a map like this you can you can say like where would be a better place to focus your efforts to look for fish spawning locations and, 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 and reef structures. Um, but I also talked earlier about how the, uh, like a need for further QAQC. Um, you can see in places like Tannery Creek and Mission Peninsula, you're starting to see like a, like a classification, like some lines. You might think that those are like um, maybe sand waves or, or um, 
some geological feature, and that's possible, but I think more likely that there's some there's some uh, lingering issues that need to be um, ironed out in the seams between overlapping lines in our in our bathy. And you know we've worked very hard already, but you know it's possible there's some like eph ephemera coming in from the satellite correctors that we need to, that we need to fix or something like that. So um, there's still work to be done on on the uh, QAQC of some of this uh, bathymetric data. And just to uh, show the distributions of of these classes, the geomorphological classes here, you can see that slopes uh, dominate in every um, every reef we've sampled so far, except Tannery Creek. So slopes are more than 50% everywhere, but Tannery Creek has got uh, flats are almost 50%. But the overall picture is uh, slopes are 50 some percent, uh, flats are in like 17, and then ridges and valleys are almost exactly the same, they're like 14%. And that's, that's, like, that's like the global proportion for, <clears throat> for all of these reefs. And uh, just one more way to look at these uh, geomorphological classes here. So here's the breath, breast geomorphology on exa an exaggerated uh, bathymetric map from our, from our multi-beam bathy here. And so you're sort of like standing as an observer uh, like looking at a at a at up up a slope here, and then in the background you can see a flat and gray in the in the distance, and just uh, notionally we're 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 happy to see what this what this is doing. I mean we're we're actually seeing ridge features here, and uh, and valley features here, and we think that this is this is um, providing a classification that's useful at the scale that fish might make habitat selection decisions. So <clears throat> we're um, we're tentatively um, optimistic about this. We think this is doing um, something something useful for for the geomorphological classes, basically. Okay, so for the uh, the next analysis, we 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 I mentioned I, earlier, we we, we performed us a, a substrate classification model. So we used elk rapids because, as I touched on, it it's, uh, seemed like it had some of the more more varied data, and it seemed like it's some of the cleaner data. Um, we used it as a test case with manually interpreted AUV uh, images. We predicted CMAX classes as a function of uh, the depth, roughness, slope, um, terrain ruggedness index, and topographic position index. And then importantly, we used, so all those are like derivatives of the bathymetry, those first five. And then the, we also added the backscatter, which is critical. And for those that aren't experts in, um, sonar uh, signal processing that you know bathy is like you, you send the signal down and, and like the like the range the distance you get back is like you know that's the shape how far it was how deep it was but then the backscatter is like the intensity of that return and it tells you something about the absorption and it's thought that that uh, is really important for understanding what what the seabed composition actually is so it's it's, it's really important to inc incorporate the backscatter in a substrate classification model <clears throat> and so we put that in to a random forest model with um, tenfold uh, cross-validation, which means you randomly hold out 10% of the data and then you iteratively go through. So all of the data actually goes into the training and all of the data is used for testing, but it's uh, it's sort of bootstrapped so that the model is, is hip to not overfit, essentially. And you can see over here in the map on the right, so this is the backscatter with our AUV tracks overlaid on top of it. So these lawnmower passes here are like 30 meter spacing between them. And then um, these bigger ones are from a different day. It's something like 200 meter spacing between, between the days. <clears throat> and those are the actual, uh, those are the, like the actual classes. Those are human labeled data um, overlaid on top of them, those points. And so here's the uh, predicted substrate map from our um, random forest model. It had, uh, an accuracy of 94% uh, within the ten, tenfold cross-validation. And <clears throat> it's, again, doing things that we're, um, we were hoping it would do. So it's, it's in these like areas in here, hopefully you guys can see my mouse. It's, this is like sort of a, a flatter region and it's, it's predicting like the, like the yellow is like a, a coarse gravel mix and a pebble, some of the, some of the smaller, some of the smaller classes, but then as you go, um, I've lost my mouse too. As you go into the, uh, as you go up slope, you get into the blue cobble, um, and then you get pebble here, and then out out here in the larger plain, you get um, the fines as well. And so, 
um, just as a as a first pass at this, the 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 substrate classification model we think is um, making predictions that that are consistent with what we might expect as well. And so the next steps for um, for this this effort is to obviously do a little more QAQC, and then once we've gotten that and pushed it through our internal review, we'll publish the Bathy and backscatter data. We'll expand the substrate classification to all the reefs um, and retrain the model with more ground truth observations. Uh, potentially, potentially expand the list of predictor variables that go into it. I think uh, some low hanging fruit for that might be the uh, the geomorphological classes from BRAS, for instance. Um, and then we're going to continue mapping reefs in 2022 with MDNR and uh, Nature Conservancy input. Uh, and then if we need to standardize our methods with uh, Fish and Wildlife Service, who's who recently acquired the same uh, sonar system we have, uh, potentially including calibrating our our multi beams to have uh, to hit the same standards. <clears throat> so in summary, we're mapping shallow reefs at scales that are relevant to fish habitat selection. Uh, our AUV is uh, providing the, the ground truth data and the, um, the substrate classification models are underdeveloped, under development for both color and stereo, uh, stereo camera data. And we're happy to be contributing to the high resolution maps, um, you know, uh, as part of the Lakebed 2030 mission. And we're working collaboratively with our partners to harmonize the methods. Um, and this is uh, a very collaborative and group effort. And I would be remiss to not thank everybody who collected all of this data and helped so much with um, the analyses and the model development, and of course, our funders. So. Thank you all, and uh, thank you everyone for hosting this conference. It's been wonderful, and sorry about the uh, technical challenges here today, uh, specifically on my end, so I apologize for that, and I will be more than happy to take some questions. Great, thanks, Sam. Um, we haven't had any questions come in yet, um, and, but for anyone who has questions, please submit them in the question box. Um, I do have one question in the meantime. I'm wondering if you know when the data you've been collected might be available, um, publicly available, and where we might find it. Uh, it'll probably be published on ScienceBase, our own USGS internal uh, public-facing website. You know, we have mandates to do that anyway, because uh, it's, you know, federal government research. I would think, you know, probably by the end of the year would be would be a good would be a good guess. It would be like at least this year's data would be available for the the uh, bathy and bathymetry or the bathy and the backscatter product. The um, the derived products, I'm I'm not sure, but but certainly the the bathy and backscatter would probably be be able to be public by the end of the year. Okay, 